Well, good morning. And of course, happy Mother's Day to all, whatever the age. And th I'm glad you made it here. You're okay? Okay. <laughs> Good to see you and you, Runa. Yes. This is a beautiful day. It's a time of special relationships. We'll be focusing on that this morning. So uh, welcome you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For those able, please rise as we sing the opening verses, Love Divine, I Love this Excel. Love's excellent joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbound. Love thou art, fills us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, oh breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit let us find thy promised rest take away the love of sin in alpha and omega be and of faith as its beginning set our hearts at limb Liberty. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory in to glory till in heaven take our place till we cast our crown before lost in wonder as always on this special morning the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship and renewal of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and we turn to the Word. Okay, now I'm really projecting. <laughs> uh, you brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows. 
those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats, Salah. Come and hear, all of you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is from John 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to do something spontaneous real quick. What's one thing that you appreciate about your mother? Her personality. You enjoy her personality. That's a good thing to hear. Staying home with you. Taking care of you. Cooking. Cooking. <laughs> that's high in my list, too, and my mama. I... And you, eating, oh, she's good at providing good eats, yes. There's a host of things that our mothers are remembered for. Uh, thank you for sharing.
I'm going to invite you to all stand just to uh, get the blood flowing a little bit. Please rise for those who are able. Um, and uh, I'm wondering, Katie, did your mom want you to play piano? Um, yeah. Did she? Yeah. Did she say you can just practice whenever you like? Okay. He got candy at lessons. Uh, okay, so that attracted you. Uh, so mom told you a truth. There's not al always candy. There's not always candy, and you're going to have to practice. Moms, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the specialty of the day. There's Things to be rejoiced about in more ways than one today. Thinking of mothers, of course, but also your word, which gives us life and reminds us of the need to practice our faith and to continue to grow as your people as we appreciate one another. Bless now the words of my mouth. In Jesus' strong name, amen. You may be seated. A teacher gave her second-class students um, a test after a day. This is the day after, a pop quiz, actually. But the, the first day was on uh, magnets and uh, what magnets are for and how they work. So the next day when she gave her pop quiz, she says, I'm thinking of a six-letter word that starts with M, and it picks things up. What is it? And I'm supposed to write down their answer. She was greatly surprised when a, just about 50% of the students wrote in for the answer to the question was mother, <laughs> not magnet, who picks a lot of things up. Mothers do that, don't they? One of the things we appreciate is mom picks us up in a number of ways. Um, so happy Mother's Day. Then there's a teen daughter who came down from her bedroom uh, on Mother's Day. Uh, she didn't eat with the rest of the family. She saw her mother standing over the uh, sink washing. And the daughter says, oh, Mom, it's Mother's Day. You don't have to wash dishes on Mother's Day. Just put it off until tomorrow. Thanks for the help, kid. Uh, it's not easy being a mother, a parent in our day and age, particularly, oh, I, just, I don't know if it's ever been, but mothers are precious and they're needed for a host of reasons, and I'd like to review some of them. Uh, and the, some insight comes from our gospel lesson. John 14, 15, 17. And this is New International Version. It adds a few words for a certain word. A few more words for a certain word. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father. He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. And of course, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, which would be sent after he ascended which is celebrated in a lot of churches uh, next Sunday. Uh, but the word for the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, is advocate, one who supports us, supports someone as they go through life, to help them. Why are mothers important? Because they are like advocates for us. They are here to help us in necessary ways, to support us. Uh, this morning, what I'd like to do is to do something I haven't done where I spend, I'm going to use my mother as an example of an advocate, and I'm going to list some qualities of her advocacy of I and my six sisters. And the, what I encourage you to do is to share with each other what are some ways that my mother 
was an advocate for me, who helped me and supported me. If she's no longer with it, still able to be, write them down and thank you, Lord, for her. If she's still living, is to share that a meal time or some quiet time where you have con caring conversation. It's good to remember and it's good to share it. My mother will be 100 on June 27th in another month, less than a month. And we're going to have a big celebration, and she has a very large family, uh, pff, us seven kids, took the scriptures, go and multiply. Uh, she's got easily a hundred uh, grandkids, great-greats, great-greats, and et cetera, out of seven kids. She also has survived the loss of three husbands. My dad died at 33. Uh, then a second husband, they made 20-some uh, years, late, high 20s uh, together. Then after that, at age 20, uh, 81, mom married again, a guy who had lost his wife and, was, and they got to be friends. Soon after, he came looking, and mom, had, for 10 years, had been by herself, etc. after Norman, my, second, uh, my stepfather, died. Uh, and then he died uh, a year ago last fall. So she's been through a lot. Well, one of the things that I remember of my mother that we'll be sharing, we plan on, trust that she'll be there, but her mother lived to 103, so the chances are she should make it uh, at the end of June. One of the things that my mother helped me, and I believe a lot of my sisters, is that she helped us to understand that life is an adventure. So I, my youngest sister, who's 66 now, she's a retired nurse practitioner for many years. Uh, she also liked to uh, do some collating of mother. In fact, she collated. She loves to sit down with mom. And this is also something encouraging to one another, or, or your parent, uh, if they're still living, or your mother, and ask all sorts of questions. Have a set of questions. So my retired nurse practitioner did that two years ago over a period of time and she actually put together a book that is published stories from my early life Ethel Edwards and it's about when she grew up and she grew up you know a hundred years ago when things were uh, still run by when they would uh, harvest corn it was by a hand horse pull the buggies and, and she just goes short little snippets and she recorded what mom said but then she did last year she sent out a story one of the stories that's not in here it's later in her life so as a sign of her adventurousness the great Yellowstone caper she sent out and I reposted it just the, the other day on Facebook my mother was known for being adventurousome which expresses freedom which is a faith concept, isn't, isn't it? I have come that you may be free. Well, it was the winter of 1996, and Mom decided to make one last visit to see her older brother, Joe, in Portland, Oregon. And I figured that out. That's 71. That's what I am. And then she goes and does this. Well, it was the winter, etc. And her second husband, Norman Salmonson, had recently passed away as I had the husbands of her sister, Verna Koprud, and her friends, Betty Knudsen and Dort Bowes. Mom rallied some lady, these ladies, all older than her, and they agreed to go with her to Oregon. Mind you, none of the other ladies were comfortable driving, and two of them had never been out west. Betty had just gotten out of the hospital after having a heart attack, and Dort was on oxygen for severe COPD. You get the picture. Mom just said, you can die out west just as well as you can die in Minnesota. Let's go. That was Mom. End of discussion. So they all went. Mom drove. Being a good guide, Mom decided to take the north route through Yellowstone, she's been through that number of times over the years with us and Norman. Remember, it's the middle of winter. Is usually Yellowstone open during the middle of winter? Uh-uh. Mother was the bane of the ranger's existence for several days until they got her out of the park. 
She argued that she had been through the park many times and could go through there even though the roads were closed. <laughs> the ranger learned that her friends were old and sick and may never get back to the park and needed to see it. So they let her, mom, and the three friends stay in the cabin two nights. Then they had to leave. Suffice it to say that life with mom has always been an adventure, unquote. It's not just my mom. She has her own unique personality. But your mom has a story. You as a mom has a story. You have your own adventures. It's okay to claim them. Both the good things, but also the times that, that were challenging times. Even the faux pas. Now, I know not many of you make faux pas, but my mom has made a number of faux pas. That's all part of the adventure. Mom would often say, let's go. She's the type that she, she worked hard. Of the three uh, sisters in her family, she was the one that just was physical. She was out juicing the cows. When the guys were out hand-picking the uh, harvest, she would come in uh, picking corn, then she'd go milk the cows with her mama because that's what happened after long days, etc. But she loved to do is, let's go, let's go swimming with us kids. Let's go to the Dairy Queen. She loved Dairy Queen. Uh, let's go swimming. Mom loved swimming because there was a Dutch Charlie Creek on the farm where they lived. And she loved to swim. Mom still swims. And my nurse, uh, my youngest daughter, nurse practitioner, last su uh, summer took her in the therapy pool in this huge complex where she lives in memory care. And they went swimming. And Melanie was going to arrive next week back from Florida uh, for the next six months, and she'll take her swimming again. But she also told me in part of the venture, and it's something expressed in confirmation that I put together over the years, is that one of the important rituals and traditions of families is work, play, love, and worship. Work, play, love, and worship. It's very comprehensive. And mom encouraged us to do that. She always got us to church. And we'd all come running in. And if she, we were all, as seven of us would sit there and we're jabbering, boy, when she gave that dirty look with her brows, she'd lean over, if not, and pinch us real hard. <laughs> Anybody ever have that with your mama? Or a favorite way to get your attention? That's okay to remember that stuff. It's fun to think about it. Mom also often advocated or supported service. And she showed it in so many ways. For her church, she was church president, Bible study leader, women's uh, president, blah, 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 blah. And, and when she got in her 60s, nobody would come forward as a janitor, so her and another woman cleaned the church for 11, 12 years. Service. She was a blood donor. Justice. Last fall, she always was concerned about uh, that people were treated fairly. I got a call from the facility in, north, in Annadale, north of Minneapolis. Uh, the lady who runs the uh, activities, which includes bringing in a Catholic church priest, for Sunday worship, because I was a bit concerned. Why don't you have a Protestant too? But, well, we can't get anybody from town, etc. But she called me up uh, October of last fall, and she says, you know, Dean, your mother uh, isn't going to be allowed to attend uh, Catholic service anymore. I, I said, why? She's not allowed. I've never heard such a thing. She's 99 years old, and you're not going to let her worship because she loves worship? She loves to sing, and she says, well, she discovered that she couldn't receive communion. The priest, for some reason, must have been an old, real old school, would not allow a non-Catholic to receive. And mom, as feisty as she said, she's on her walker, you know, or she'd, she'd be sitting there, and she would pop off and say, why? I believe in Jesus. Why can't I receive communion? And she raised a kerfluffle. 
And the priest got uncomfortable, and twice it happened. And he says, Ethel, you can't come here anymore. And I said, that's really strange. I've never, ever refused someone communion, no matter what, whenever I've done nursing home or church, etc. So she's that type because it is a kind of a justice issue. Why are you stopping me from receiving? Justice issue. Um, we had some... Uh, Norman, my stepfather, had a brother whose kids were uh, mentally handicapped, whatever term is approved, challenged, thank you, challenged. And um, they were kind of odd, and a lot of people felt uncomfortable. Well, there's a bunch of them, uh, two girls and three boys, and uh, we knew that the community, uh, they lived on a farm, but the word is, you know, they're a little off and mom would say in our family gathering she says and you're invited and I remember when we were I was younger elementary junior high I'd say mom it's our family gathering why well they're family too and I don't care what other people think of them they're welcome here and they would come and we got used to that and I was proud of it as I got into my high school years what does your mother stand for? What do you remember? It's okay to remember those things because God has sent an advocate in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit and is in each one of us, and our mothers express what God wants. Advocates. She had modeled encouragement. She would often tell me, go and enjoy, enjoy yourself. But sometimes, because I was only son, she would do this, and I'd tell her, Mom, it doesn't make sense what you tell me. Dean, just go out and have a good time, but don't get hurt. That's a double, you know. Okay, Mom, well, how can I get hurt if I'm going to go out and have fun? You have, you know, she did that. But I think that's because of the way Dad died, and she, I was the only son, and I understand that. But she'd say, just do the best. Whatever it was, just do the best. Give it your best shot. And even though some, then she would say, even though others may think Christ, Jesus Christ, is a nobody and they're uncomfortable, stick with Jesus Christ. She encouraged me in the walk of faith. I think that's, she's one of the most positive reasons why I became a minister. Help me, she helped me understand and believe and trust that Jesus is the Son of God, my Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. Advocate of spirit of truth. Uh, just a couple more, and I'll shut it down. She would often tell me, Dean, as I got older, I come home from uh, college, then the military, then back in college, and seminary, and then visiting. She says, Dean, don't believe everything that you read. And that's one of the things that encouraged me, I believe, over the years where I took uh, chaplaincy training as my internship for a seminary. Why later on I took, uh, I had a, before that, even that, before seminary, it was a master's in education with guidance and counseling. And then later on, a uh, family therapy training for two years while I was in, par in the parish, uh, just part time, but I, I completed the training. Because I'm always, what is the truth that people are telling each other in counseling? I've counseled a lot of people. And you're discerning who's telling the truth or who's telling parts of the truth because it's important. It isn't all just one-sided when there's a conflict. How can we diffuse this and say, okay, let me help me understand it. She helped me with that spirit of truth, seeking that, as Scripture says, uh, seek wisdom and whatever you get, Proverbs 4 or 7, is whatever you get, seek wisdom, but whatever you get is get insight. There's a lot of stuff that's happened in our country the past three years that we're, uh, I have questioned, and now some of the truth of some of the stuff that's happened by our government and some of the shutdowns and the rationale and why forcing people to take something that wasn't necessarily, in fact, there are plenty of evidence that says it's actually harmful. But 
that's part of the deal. And finally, and I'll shut it down. Uh, Mom advocated and modeled love. Uh, She always reminded us, look, I'm not perfect, you're perfect. You're not perfect. But that's why we need to claim God's love in Jesus and to share it the best we can. One of the most appreciative things that I always have of Mom is that she never held grudges. We could have some searing differences of opinion. But she, she never held it over us. Well, remember when you did this? Oh, that was terrible. She never did that. She just let it go. I saw a sign back there about I am. Someone left a poem on there I was reading before the service. And it says, I am. He says, well, I'm not, a, uh, that what happened in the past is the past. Mom was so good at that. In counseling, I know that people hold on to grudges and it leads to horrible things. She was so good at just letting it go. I'll, I got to share this. For instance, one of the faux pas that I've made in the younger years, my uh, junior year of high school, uh, I had a good year at football, went out for basketball, like a small town, very small town. So I didn't start. I wasn't as good in basketball. But two of the guys, I see, one was a starter, one was the next up. He was very good also. We went out on a school night to a movie. And one of the concerns was getting home, this is during winter, before what? Curfew. If you're out for sports, 10 o'clock, be home, and blah, blah, blah. So we went to this movie. It was blowing and snowing, et cetera, so I dropped the guys off. And for some silly reason, I said, well, I can't go through town because the farm was two miles south. I went along on gravel roads, which Minnesota doesn't have the nicety of asphalt all over. We have plenty of gravel roads. So as I was coming home to the one road that took me uh, to the farm, there's a big incline, and I go, oh, there's, it, the drifting was horrible. So I'm not going to make it up. So I, I went down another half mile to this really old road, which isn't greater than anything during winter, and there was not so bad like the, what I saw on the other hill. So I, with my car, clunk, 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 b- broke through the smaller drifts. And finally, when I got to the, you know, the, division is uh, our land and I got right in the middle of our land south of the farm place there was so much drifting drift and drifts and still drifting it plugged me up and I couldn't move forward or back and I go great I said a few other things (laughs) so and wind uh, whipping cold wind I walked through uh, for the half mile to the farm place just in a bad, bad mood because I knew I was going to get char- uh, screamed at by my stepfather. Came in, and he says, well, let's go get that thing out before it really blows over. So we took the old H and went around on the, the pavement at road and then county road and then off to the side. By the time we got to it, only the tip of the antenna could be seen. He says, we're not going to get this thing out of here. And um, you know how when you do something really stupid, you just churn inside, embarrassed, mad, blah, 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 all those emotions. I know we rode home, freezing in that whipping, and we got in there. And Mom says, Dean, just go to bed. Get a good night's sleep. And she didn't bring it up. Norman, my stepfather, did. <laughs> and he said, we're going to have to have Cornell Keel come out with his big blower and that. And he did eventually a week later it was or as we used to have snow but again the love that mom she could have held a grudge she could have berated me i got that (laughs) by the stepfather uh but she just kind of says okay we'll deal with it we'll take care of it and boy was i relieved when they pulled my old plymouth two-door plymouth six banger uh got home and I saw that sitting and but then the drifts were above above we used to have snowstorms out there but mom was going okay let's go do chores together she went and berate me um I give you a new command that you love one another as I love you mothers are so often a portrait of that I have my memories 
and I share them. We laugh about them. We cry about some of them because of some of the sad times. I believe God calls us to claim the Spirit, His Spirit in each of us. And on certain days, like Mother's Day, today or this week somehow, thank you, moms, or even our spouses who are moms, for the special memories. They're not perfect. None of us are. My mom wasn't. But be grateful because we're here together and we respect and love our mothers. In Christ, amen. A song of response. Spirit, loving spirit, you have chosen me to be. You have drawn me to your wonder. You have set your sign on me. Like a mother, you enfold me. Hold within your own feed me with your very body for me of your flesh and bone like a father you protect me teach me discerning I speak your soldier let me see the world from high loving spirit chosen me to be you have drawn me to your wonder you have set your sign on me. I invite all who are able to please rise as we proclaim the basics of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness, the resurrection of the Holy and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Wondrous giving God, we thank you for so many gifts. The gift of salvation for Jesus Christ, the spirit of truth, your Holy Spirit, and the word which, which presents that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our heart. We also think of special people. There are saints of all sorts by the church, but there are also the saints of our mother. Each of us have mothers Saved by your grace, covered by your grace, not perfect people, but who try their best and do their best that they can. Thank you for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we think of uh, the challenges of the world, the blessings of uh, companion synods in Meru, Tanzania, El Salvador, Reformation, Milwaukee. We also know the struggles of our country but also particularly the pressing, pressing issue of the border. How can there be, and we pray for leaders who practice wisdom in doing something, borders are important, recognizing the sovereignty of a country, so that there's a just process all in this. We think of this sadness of those who desire freedom like our countries. 
bless all this time uh, as we help each other through it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also think of all those who are in need, body, mind, spirit. Take all those we've listed in the bulletin. We also add brick at this time. But hear us also of people that are on our minds who are experiencing things that need your continued support and advocacy. Here it says we give them to you silently or out loud. Karen. Micah. Lord, we thank you that you hear and you know. Into your wondrous arms we give all whom, for whom we pray today and throughout the week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus' strong name, amen. As we come to the altar, I say the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, during time of travail, betrayal, confusion, and anxiety about the future, to embolden his disciples, Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given out of love, given for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we pray the prayer that Christ taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is the host. All are welcome to receive. Follow the lead of the ushers. You may be seated. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. given for you body of Christ given for you body of Christ for you
body of Christ for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ for you. You are a child of God. Jesus loves you and will continue to grow you strong, wise, and loving. Amen. Body of Christ given for you. You also are a child of God. Jesus Christ loves you and will continue to grow you strong and wise. Body of Christ for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ 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 given for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ for you. Body of Christ for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may continue to strengthen you, give you wisdom, and hope for the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Ascending song, now thank we all our God.
as bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Have a great week in Christ. Thank you.